hello and welcome to this video and uh, in this video within a couple of uh, time that we'll be spending here I want to show you how to use SQL for data analysis so if you want to do your exploratory data analysis uh, this this is a this is a good video that you can use uh, just for that okay so um like you know me i like to use question and answers to teach and so i have 10 questions here now and each of these questions um move from simple to advanced you know from number one to ten it's like from simple uh to advanced and i've done it in such a way that it looks like you're climbing a staircase until you get to the top so one step helps you to get to the next step and you know just like that to key in much of what you're learning you know uh, when it comes to SQL secondly I'm using PostgreSQL I'm using a tool called dBeaver and it is actually uh, linked to my PostgreSQL database that is in my machine all right so uh, the codes i'll be using are codes that you can use for other sql uh, uh, products and uh, you shouldn't have a problem using that so you can still stick around whether you're using sql server oracle mysql or whatever you can actually use it based on uh, what i'm going to teach you so let's just dive right in and start uh, and start learning so the first one we're looking at is a very simple one if you're used to SQL or you've been using SQL you find this to be very very simple but for those out there who are just beginners this is one place they could start learning so it says select all fields in the other table all fields in the other table actually we have uh, some tables here so I'm just going to go here so it's there on the by right database and um, within it you go to schemas you go to public and uh, you're going to see the tables that come in here so we've got an order details we've got orders we've got pizzas we've got uh, pizza type uh, tables so so four of the tables are here and um, we're going to be querying each of these tables and then you know finding out what is what is contained inside it all right so the first one is saying that we should select all fields in the order table so what we need to do is do a select statement select you know select and what we usually do is use a star you know like an asterisk so whenever you use an asterisk you are saying select all all the columns that you have in the table and so that actually helps us to carry out this so from so I'm selecting all from where I'm selecting from the orders table so orders so there you can see I have orders I'm able to see this but anyway you may not see it in yours but um, that's one thing dbeaver tries to do for us but that's not a show blocker so we are saying select all from others. So if we run this um, in this application, I'm just using control enter. So if I run this, it's going to give me uh, this table that we have here. So it has selected everything that is on the table. And um, I can actually, uh, just for readability, I can, you know, do it like this. And you can see that if I run it again, it's if I run it again it's going to run you get it and that's our table for us so as simple as that let's go to question number two so question number two so question number two is just trying to show us something different except that we are using uh, the different uh, table to do this now so um, let's just get some more space so it says select the following from the order details table so you know like the previous one we did we would have just done a select all from order order details you know like this um for now i'm going to take that out i'll explain that later 
so we could just do this and just hit this and we'll get the four columns that are there see but this time around uh what if we are told to bring to you know get specific tables out of it so specific columns rather out of it so this is what we do so we take those columns those specific columns and then we list them out order id and um, so we separate each of them with a comma and we have pizza underscore id and then we also have quantity quantity okay quantity now quantity is the last one i really need not put a comma for that because that is the last one and then we are ready to run it for some um uh, sql uh, database it is required that you have a semicolon to close uh this query whichever it is it is going to run if i don't have it in this and i hit it it's going to run but just know that in some of them, you really would need this semicolon for your query uh, to run. So this is what we have here. So we have the ID, we have the pizza ID, and we have the quantity here. See, So what this question just helps us to see is how to select certain columns from a table and display those columns. So let's go to question number three and see what um, question number three is all about. So for question number three, it says using the order details table. That's the previous table we just used. Return all records. Okay. So we've done this before. Select all from, from where? From order underscore details. Okay. So, so if we run it, uh so i think i have um is that the s so i must have spelled something wrong yes i did i'm looking for other details okay so that looks right so here it is so all of it has been selected and it says um using the return all records that have mexicana l uh, mexicana l so if you look at them very well you're going to see that okay right here we have mexicana s and that really is mexicana small you're going to see mexicana l and you're going to see it just like that you get it so but this time around it wants us to just bring only mexicana l so let me just copy this uh, so that i can use it so i've selected all these but actually it wants us to look at just those for mexicana so that introduces another clause sql clause for us and that sqs clause is the where clause where so the where clause helps us to put a condition you know to our query so we're saying where um the pizza id pizza underscore id is uh, equal to is equal to this now it can't stay like this because it's a string you know so we need to uh put it put uh single quotes around it and not double quotes so see if i put double quotes around it um, no, um let's do that double quotes around it like this and run it we are going to have an an error here see so what we normally do is um, we don't use the single uh, double quotes rather we don't use the double quotes here so we're going to use single quotes here so just like this and then when we run it you can see it brings everything that has to do with uh, Mexicana uh, L which is Mexicana large uh, large size so the where clause, the where clause helps us to streamline or to filter as if it were and bring out uh, from the table whatever we have. So it doesn't take away columns. It takes away rows that we do not uh, need. Okay. So let's go to the next question and see um, what we have. So, so far we've learned how to use the select statement, 
the from we've learned how to you know get all the columns in the table get a few uh columns from a table and now we're learning how to do uh filters from uh from a particular table how to filter now the the, the let's go to the next question so the next question will be question number four and let's just go click that so in question number four i have this question here it says using the uh, order details table, return all records that have Mexicana uh, in, I think that's supposed to be an in, sorry, in the PISA field. So in the PISA field, if it's got a Mexicana at all, we will need to bring it, uh, we need to bring it in. Now, this is similar to what we did in uh, question number three here. So I'm just going to take this. So I'll take this query here and do a modification in uh, question number four. So here in question number four, um, you see, uh, we're not going to run this one again. We're not going to run this one again. Now, if I should do this, you're going to see that nothing comes out at all, you know, because there's really nothing that is exactly this in that field. So what we just need to do is take out this and bring in a like. So, so there is uh, this like operator that helps us to get anything that is like this now even if i should do this i'm not going to get anything at all because the like goes with something that helps you to search for anything that is like this so i know that all the mexicana uh, you know pizzas has got mexicana starting it from the beginning so but at the end i do have underscore maybe uh, L, S, or M, or anything of that sort. But the thing is that I want to pick all of them just in one go, you know, or get them down in one st with one stone as if it were, you know. So what I do, I now put a percentage at the end of my Mexicana. You get it? So that's exactly what it is. So if I should hit this, if I should run it, you would see that I have all of them coming out. You get it, all of them coming out here. That is what you see right uh, here. So we've successfully, you know, picked all of the records that's got Mexicana. Now, it would have still worked if I had taken out these ones and just, you know, something like this at the beginning. So some things are missing at the beginning, but I know that at the middle, I have this in anything Mexican. So if I run it, it's going to give us just this. So that's the way we do it. So if what uh, what differentiates all what we want is at the end, we we'll just put a we we'll just put uh, that uh, that percentage sign at the end. If it's at the beginning, we put. If it's on both of them, we can always put it. Meaning that we want to find a word that either it's in, in the middle of the world you've got whatever that whatever you have here so once that is done and you run it this is what you get all right so let's go to see uh question five so what is question five telling us to do question five is saying using the other details table so the other details table again is what we are looking at it says return the total quantity sold of the different categories of the uh, mexicana pizza in a field called category quantity sold so what it is telling us to do is saying that okay we've got an order details but we are particular about the mexicana pizza categories and so we should uh you know bring them out we should do we should we should query it in such a way that we 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 get it out and for each of those categories we want to get uh the quantity sold the total quantity uh sold so maybe we just uh so what we do is let's just start from the beginning it says select select um 
and what are we going to select we want to select the we want to select the pizza id you know that's one of the things we want to select let me just put them in a row like this i also want the quantity so i'm going to do quantity you get it and all of this i want to get it from uh order details and um i'm going to take this one out first and i'm going to run it so quantity quantity so what am i spelling wrongly select this this from this so uh let me see one tt okay so let's do this i'm going to just try to find out if i'm doing what i should be doing so what is it quantity yeah that's it so we've got pizza underscore id comma and then we're going to have quantity all right i think it gets it now so that's what it is here but this is not what they are telling us to do you know they want the total quantity for each of this mexicana you know product so now i want to select only those that are mexicana and that is where we did what we did previously where we said where the pizza underscore id is uh, like is like uh single quotes mexicana and uh, we've got this so we're back to what we have before now what this question wants to introduce us to is introducing us to what uh, to the group the group clause in sql so what we're going to do let me just bring this one down a little so that we can be seeing everything so what we are going to do we're going to do a group and by group by there are two different words not one word together group by pizza uh, underscore id so what we really want to do here is we just want one row for mexicana m one row for mexicana s and one row for mexicana l and then we want the total quantity of all of that so a group by helps us to group you know columns that we want this grouping to be and so we want this grouping to be in the pizza id uh color okay then the next thing we're going to do we're not going to stop here because if you run this one you're going to get an error you get it so it is telling us that look this group by needs an aggregate function now what we're going to do is that we're going to build an aggregate function here so that aggregate function is going to be a sum function, you know, to bring all of it together. So we're going to have it to be a sum function. And this is where we're going to call it category um, quantity if you are um, sold. So we have it as this sold. Now this would run, but uh, you might be wondering uh, why am I doing it? When we want to give a column a different name, we usually do this. Uh, statutorily, we need to write as so and so. So we are saying do this summation. And when you have it like this, it's going to come out as a column and that this is going to be the column name as you will get to see soon. So you can see if I run this now, you can see now that I have it summarized you know so anytime you want to summarize to see what is the makeup of each of these this is what you have uh, right here okay and uh, so it says um, return another column so before I answer the B I just uh, feel that I should show you something so you can see that sometimes you might want to sort you get it you might want to sort them 
in certain order for example uh, like you can see you have the 162 eight six seven and four five five well if you want to sort them so in sql we don't have what you call sort but we have order so order by is like group by so i just felt this is a good time to bring it in so that you can know the difference between these two so um, i'm going to just do order by and my order by i'm going to use this one here copy this so I want it to order by the category quantity sold. So um, if I just do it like this, so you see it's from the least one to the very high one. That's more like ascending. So what if we're told to do it uh, descending order? All I need to do is write this in there and then hit my enter button. So descending from the higher number to the smaller number. If this is to change, ascending those... Uh, yes that's what it does so this is ascending from the lower number up to the higher number so you can actually do it like this and then you will get what you want now let's go to b b is saying return another column called total pizza quantity sold uh irrespective of the category so within this um they want another column and this column is going to be what is the total you know that is sold so what we need to do is to do what might be called uh, a sub query. So we're going to try to write a sub query here. And um, because this is the first column, the second column, I'm going to put the comma because I want to get another column. Now in here, because I'm writing a sub query, I'm going to put uh, uh, an open and close bracket. So this open and close bracket within it i'm going to do a query inside the select and what do i want to select i want to select um quantity i want to select this quantity from the same table this same table that we're looking at so we're selecting quantity from it and uh, from uh, order underscore details so we're selecting it from other details now uh sql needs to see this as a column you get it is it ought to see this one as a column so what it simply means is that i can leave quantity here like this remember what we did in the previous ones you get it so let me do something here so that we can clearly see um what is happening here so um this is another query here so i'm going to just break it down so that you can see what it is so it is just like this so here i'm going to tell it to do a sum of everything in that uh quantity so it's going to do a sum of all of them so that's going to give us the total quantity but you can see here that I'm already, you know, as if it were aggregating. You get it? I'm already aggregating and getting what the sum is. So I have no where clause that restricts it to wherever it should be and so on. I'm supposed to call this one pizza underscore QTY quantity underscore sold. You get it? So let's see what happens if i run this so you see i have run it and it's giving me the same uh, you know value so that's the total number of uh, pizzas sold irrespective of what the category is and so on so what you are seeing here is a situation where um from these data i can easily find what is the percentage of mexicana small that is sold so it's a, it's a matter of finding um what the percentage what is the category quantity sold divided by uh pizza uh, uh total quantity sold okay so uh, i can see i'm supposed to put total on the score yeah so to the total quantity sold so even with SQL, we can be able to get this percentage, you know, the percentage of this, you know, and uh, solve it like that. But for this question, 
uh, this is what is required and we have done just that so having done this let's go to question number six so let's go for question number six so question number six is saying using the table of the previous tax so the table of the previous tax is what we did in uh, question number five and in question number six here we are told to create a CTE a common table expression create a common table expression with the previous table that we have so I'm going to show you what a common table expression does so this is one of the it's the most of the time they consider it advanced but I, I don't really see it as advanced because it's something you could learn in the next five minutes and you could start using it so this is what it's all about so I'm going to go to question number five I'm going to pick this thing that I've done here I'm going to copy it and uh, back to question number six I'm going to paste it here so how do I create a CTA or a common table expression a uh, common table expression is a way of holding a table or an SQL query uh, to be like a variable so you say uh, uh, let x be equal to 2 and so if you're doing any analysis with x it sees that uh, x means 2 and so anywhere you use x it's in its brain it is using 2 right there so it's something like that and this is how to set it up we have the width clause so it's a width so width I'm going to just say TB1 meaning that table 1 as you get it so and I'm going to you know so all of this SQL, all of this table that I've done previously, I'm going to, you know, have them inside brackets. And so what I'm saying is that anytime I use table one, TB1, it should return for me this entire table. So if I run it now, you're going to have errors in it. It's not going to do anything, uh, anything sensible here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to... So I'm going to act like I want to write a comment and uh, I'll just leave that one and this space and I'm going to say select and I'm going to select all from TB1 so TB1 that I have put here I want to use it now I want to call this and see if it would return for me this table so once I hit my enter button you can see that uh, it's bringing this you see so it now recognizes that this entire query i have here is tb1 so that is one way we use uh, common table expressions we use it with the width clause so with the table name or whatever name we want to give to the query and then as and then we have this one to follow it like this inside brackets so it's going to recognize it so there are many advanced usage of these kind of things for example when they do uh, use SQL to do um, when they use it to do some data engineering you can create some virtual tables because like this table and its structure it's not in the database but we have it as a query here and we can hold it with a variable and work with it so that's what we want to try to do here so if you look at the question B here it says return a fourth column one two three the fourth column that shows the percentage of category of sales on the quantity of all pizza sold so we want to find this category quantity sold what's the percentage over you know this other one that we have here um, let's get all of them let's get all of them so I'm going to tell it that it should give me everything there so when I run it um, it's doing that because I've left some space so that's it for us and so I'm going to just do the fourth column now so that fourth column you see I put the comma after my asterisk you know and I'm going to ask it to give me category Cati sorry category category um, category underscore Q QTY 
and underscore sold so i'm going to do this one and i just divide it by the total you know underscore qty quantity um sold um that is total underscore pizza you know underscore quantity and so so this one is just going to be as uh, uh, percentage um, of category category uh, pizza so let's just put something like that to use to it could be any name that you find ideal uh to use i want to believe i spelled everything correctly so let's run this and see what it gives us it says pizza category so let's see what has happened here okay oh i think i see where the problem is coming from it's this one because it ought to be just one word without a space so let's see if it runs perfect so it runs for us and that is what we have so now having um so now we have been able to uh do this calculation down here and we hit our contra enter to run it we run it like that and this is what it brings to us now you can see that it gives us um, zeros here and um, that's not really what we want now the reason it is doing this is because of the um, the the formats that these values uh, actually have. So we need to you know convert them to numeric formats for them to be able to calculate. So this is what I mean. So when you have a situation like this, you know you've done the right thing, but you're not getting the right answers this way. You might need to do what we call a casting. So what we actually do is this is a shorthand way of casting so we just cast it to numeric like this and uh, this other one to numeric so casting i'm going to just put um, these uh, columns and uh, say that i want it to be numeric okay so if we run this i'm getting an error because numeric should be this so good so if we run it this is what we now get so you can see that uh, we're now getting the percentage of the total sales but this is this is uh, this is correct but we might just want it to be in something like a percentage so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to round it. I'm going to round it just as we do in Excel. Uh, we round it and uh, let's round it to do two decimal places and close it and hit. So this is what we get should we uh, round it. So if we do this, this is, this is what we get. You get it. So um, let me just round it to uh, two. <laughs> two decimal places another thing i could do is to multiply this calculation we got previously by 100 so you can see that i have 0 0.33 0 0.92 1.7 so this is about it in percentage you get it so uh, the heading here shows that this percentage so this this can suffice this can be okay for us to use you know as if it as if it were so we can also do something if we want that percentage to show we do something like this to as if it were concat it with uh with a percentage sign you know so i'm going to use single quotes to just do this run it so you can see that it gives us those percentage there and it's going to give it to us as text so that's why it justifies to our left hand side so it becomes text and it shows us what the values are so that answers the question of returning what the percentage is of you know 
Mexicana, uh, any uh, category of Mexicana over the total sales that there might be. So we can do analysis with uh, SQL of this kind. All right, let's go to the next uh, uh, question. This time we are going to question seven. So question seven, uh, that's four questions to go now. It says using the order table, convert the values in the date field to a date format. Okay, this is what they want us to do. So we do select all from from orders. Um, no, I actually want orders. And let's see what they want us to do. So you see, this is the date field here. So it being a date field, what we want to do or what they are asking us to do is to convert the values in the date field to a date format. So look at it very well. It says this date field is AZ. So it is telling us that it is actually a text field and not a date field. So if you remember what I did uh, in, um, in question six, there is this casting that I did, you know, here with this, you know, two semicolons and then put what I wanted to convert it to. So I'm going to use that same thing here. So in question seven, I'm going to say it should do this and it should convert it to that. So this is what it's going to be. So I'm going to have a table now. That table is going to have order ID comma it's going to have the date but in putting this date i'm going to put two semicolon and put date so what i'm telling sql is that hey you know what i want you to convert this into a date you know comma and uh, sorry and uh, comma and then the other one is going to be time uh do we need the time all right let's just put the time So the, the question is actually for us to uh, convert that of the date, okay? And um, let's just hit this one. So you're going to see that date now has something like a clock. So it has now converted it uh, to a date format, you know, for us to use. B says extract the year from the date data in a separate column called year. So uh, actually, this should be extract the year from the date in a separate column called year number. All right, so that's fine. So we can come here and do this. Um, so that is the date. So I'm just going to pick this. I'm just going to pick this guy, you know, put it here. So in it, it has converted it to date, uh, to date format here. So, but I just want to take out the year, you know, from it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do what you call toChar. Um, there's function called toChar, and I'm going to put this here. And um, right here, I'm going to just put how I want it. So I want it to give me, yeah. So I'm going to give it like this, and it should give me in four digits. And I'm going to call this as uh, year, year what? Year number, underscore number. Okay, so let's run this one now. So you can see that it has given it to me as uh, years. It has given me everything 2015. It has produced it for me. The only thing is that it has produced it for me as a text, which is okay for whatever analysis that I want to do. Then it says extract the month and the year in a column called month year. So it's this, it's almost the same thing we're doing, no difference. So I'm going to put a comma here. I'm just going to take this one. I'm just going to take this guy. Um, yeah, I'm going to take, let's just take everything here. We'll the, update them, come down here, put this here. So this one, it wants me to do month and year. So I'm going to just do mm dash. This is going to be month 
underscore here. All right, let's see how this would run. So that's what we have. So we have it as this. So it's going to just give us the month in two digits uh, followed by the year. You get it. So I want to believe everything is running really fine. So we'll get to know of that later uh, to be sure that all what we are picking is just the month and uh, and the year. Okay. All right. So let's go to uh, yet another. So that's correct. So we've got to the second uh, February of uh, the year here. So everything here is correct. So let's go to question number eight now. Question number eight. So in question number eight, we are told that return a table that has the following columns. From the order details table, return these tables. From the orders table, return this. All right, let's see what they want us to actually do here. So what they want us to actually do is first, let's get the others table. So we're going to select all from uh, which table, other, other underscore details, okay? Um, other details, yeah. All right, so this is what we have. But if you look at it very well, they want us to get only three columns from there. Other ID, other details ID, and the pizza ID. So they are here. So I'm going to just come down here and um, so there are more advanced form in which you can you know shorten your codes, but I always encourage you to learn it uh, from the scratch to see what it is from the scratch before you start going you know up. So we're going to take it uh, order underscore detail underscore ID is one of those things we're picking. We're going to pick the pizza ID. Uh, pizza ID. And um, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take the quantity. Come on. Quantity. So we're going to take the quantity out of it. So let's see if it gives us that. It does give us that. But see, whenever you have a, uh, um, a question that's asking you to come up with a table and from many tables, the chances are that you're going to be doing a join. So when you're doing a join, um, we uh, always advise you to start building things from um from the beginning so that you don't have to go back to do that now i'm going to explain what i mean so whenever we do joints we always give our table aliases uh you know like um uh if we don't call it other table we can easily call it uh i'm sorry if we don't call it other details we can easily call it uh something else so this time around we can use OD to represent other details. And so what we just need to do is we just need to put this OD at the beginning of all of this. OD. So that's why you see that my SQL editor keep adding something like this. And I was, uh, and you know, I was deleting it. I was waiting for this time so that we use it. So if I you know run it you know it's going to do the same thing it's not going to do any change now what we're going to do now is to now look at the other question and see what exactly they want us to do it says that this table should also have uh, from the other table it should have the month and it should have uh, the month year in this same format Remember, we have done something like that previously. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start to write a join. And this is an inner join also. What I'm trying to say is that 
all the details is the table I want to keep and it's the table I want to be uh, my left hand side and it's a table I want to import data into so it's going to be a join you know or an inner join as the case may be okay so um, so an inner join is just trying to say that the data in my right hand table which is my order details I want to keep everything and I want to ma find matching you know I'm find matching data from any other table that I'm joining with it. So the table I'm going to join is the order, you know, the orders table, you get it. So I'm going to join the orders table and I'm going to give the orders table just, I'm going to call it OS, you know, because I've used OD somewhere else. So I'm going to call it OS and I'm going to tell it that, please give me a join and this join should be on where my OD, which is my other details, dot um, pizza ID underscore ID. So there's a pizza ID in uh, my others details. There's a pizza ID in my others table. So we have it in those two tables, which helps me to match them, you know, match the two uh, tables. So I'm going to say it must be equal to OS dot uh, PISA, PISA underscore ID. So once I've done this like this, that means I can run anything I want to run on it. So um, here, join orders OS on OD P. Uh, okay, so that's where we had that issue and equal to uh, this pizza ID okay so let's check very well is that I have an error at or near um, let's see this is a dot this is a dot does this look like an asterisk oh okay I see where the problem may be coming from let's see if this is it still no or od pizza id uh, this is os pizza okay so let me just check it out select um all from uh, orders and that's the one I want. So I'm just going to select this one and run it. So it's order ID. Okay, good, 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 good. So I'm going to use that rather than this. So it's going to be order ID and this is order ID. Okay. Okay. So with this one, yes, good. So everything runs. So the 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 the, the relating um, uh, fields are the other ID uh, fields. So in the other details, I have all the other ID, and in my others table, I have the other ID. So so you can see that I've succeeded in bringing in the date that is you know in the order table the others table I've, I've brought it in here and that is what is represented here but remember that they said they want it in this format so we already know how to convert it to that first we must convert it to a date you get it so we must convert it to a date you see here it is a, it is a string it is alphabet but we don't want it to be uh, this okay so if I should now do this so you see it has something like a clock you know but we want to get this format and you already know how to do uh, that uh, format so it has a um, it has a function called to char and what this will do is help me convert it to um, you know mm for months dash for this gives us the year and we'll call it as uh, month uh, underscore yeah so that seems to work let's 
so we have an issue somewhere that's because i did not have a bracket here um so let's run this so that's what we have so this is it and we've been able to answer this question that we have here okay um so i just take this one out run it again and um, everything works fine okay that is fine so uh this was question eight so we have two questions to go uh question nine let's see what it's telling us it says extending tax eight that's the previous one add a column called price by joining the price field from the pizza table so um let's go to our question eight now so i'm going to take all of this going to take all of this and um, come to question nine so i'm going to do this uh, let's just do some formatting here all right so that's for this and if we run it this is what we have so let's look at what it wants it wants us to bring in the price by joining the price fields from the pizza table so there is a pizza table that is pizza sorry that is select all from uh, please that so i think uh, this should run so while i'm here it should run it so you can see that i have a pizza price here now the question is how do i bring it into each of these table bring it to this table that i have here so if we look at the orders orders here there is really nothing there is really nothing that associates this with the pizza price okay so let me just do this one select all from uh, pizzas okay uh yeah i know if we select this and run it then it should give us uh, let me just run it like this okay so it gives us this so we see that this pizza id pizza id we don't have it here so there is no relationship with that one at all now let us see if we have it in the details you get it so that that's uh, this other table that we have here so i'm just going to do a select um all from uh, this and just hit it to run sorry order details and hit it to run again if you see here i have a pizza id here so that is fine i have a pizza id here so what do they want but um i don't have the price in any of these two tables i don't have the price in the orders i don't i don't have the price in the the details that we have here but i have the price here so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this pizza id because i have pizza id here and i also have the pizza id uh pizza id here so i'm going to use this one i'm going to relate this to so is the other details that i'm going to use so i'm going to create another join now another join here so i'm going to do a join and it's the same thing we're doing we're joining all to the others details uh, table so i'm going to do join and it's going to be be the pizza it's going to be the pizzas um so this pizzas i'm going to use pz you know as uh the alias for it and uh, so what do we want to do here we are going to say okay join the pizzas table but on what was the condition by which we join them we're joining them on where you know we'll always quote our other details you know to come in so other details pizza underscore id is equal to p 
pz dot pizza you know pizza id okay fine so given this we will be able to get into this table and bring in you see so it runs now but i want to bring in price so i'm going to come here uh, just before the month and year the date i'm going to come here i'm going to say pz because pz has the uh, price i'm going to just put pz and price like this comma and then run it so you can see that it brings the price of each of them see i've got quantity i've got price so likely you are looking at where all of this is going to so all of this is going to settle this b it said derive another column called amount which will calculate the quantity multiplied by the price all right so and that is these two these two things here so i think the best thing to do is bring it just after price so i'm just going to come here and say whatever this is i'm going to multiply it by the price like this and just put a comma because that's not the last uh field in this query so when i hit this what it does is that it calculates it and gives us so you can see that it calculates and give us what the totals um what the totals will be so it's got the price so this one is uh let's see that one that has a two in it um where is it okay two here so 16 and you see times two is going to be 32 so it gives us that oh you can see here i didn't name my column so let's just go back and name this column we said we're going to call it amount and uh, something like that it could be anything just call it that and then there we are so here we've been able to solve the first and the um and the second question a and b so this is what it wants and with sql we are able to create it so that takes us to our last you know question that question is number 10 10 questions now uh, it looks longer but let's just look at it and see if we can quickly solve it it says create a query that returns a table with the following so it wants us to go to the it wants us to say um it wants us to select select uh, pizza underscore id and quantity comma and quantity from from where it wants from order underscore details guess that is what it is does it run for us yes it does well, let's just uh, do it like this and this one here okay all right all right so this is what it wants from us now it wants us to continue and so you see it wants you to create a, a query, one query thing. So automatically, I know that something is going to happen here. We need, um, we need a column that would uh, give us the month year from the other table, the pizza price, and uh, we also want uh, from the pizza type table, we want category to come in now let's not give ourselves too much work what this table is trying to do is what we have done here so i'm just going to copy this believing that we understood what was here and um, we're just going to go to number 10 we'll put it here so that we don't start doing all of those things again but the thing there is that when we bring what 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 we don't have here is category and category comes from the pizza type uh, table so there's a pizza type table i showed you that earlier on so this table there's a pizza type table and that pizza type table has got category so let me show you what i'm saying select 
all from pz underscore type and uh, uh, from pz type let's see if that gives it to us pz so what is the name pz pizza types okay so that is it so you can see that there's a category here they want us to bring in this category into that uh, particular table so we have a pizza type id here so we need to ask ourselves which other table that we have used here that has a pizza you know a pizza type in it so that table is this one called pizza so you would see i'm going to show you that so select all from uh, select all from uh, from where pizza so let's see how that is so you see there's a pizza type id here so and this table i've already associated it with all other things that are here so it's already running here so all i need to do to bring in that category inside is to come here and do another join and it's and you know inner join still because i'm bringing other tables i'm using it to populate i'm transforming my other details you get it as if it were so it's going to be bring this so i'm going to join p um pizza underscore types so I'm going to give it an alias and it's going to be uh, PT. I'm going to call it PT and I'm going to join it. I'm going to join it on where I'm going to quote that which I had previously. And that is this one where on where PZ dot P sorry P the type ID is equal to PT dot you can see I already have this pizza type ID here so what I have done here is I've created a join that brings it in so you can see that if I should come here and do this uh, PT dot category PT dot category and I'm going to do this. Let's see if it comes for us. So you can see that I have it here. So I've been able to bring it into this table. You get it and you know everything. So somehow, some way, I'm I'm putting my order details and bringing my pizza details and bringing quantity everything. I'm trying to create a table by which I can use to do whatever analysis that there might be okay so that takes care of that i no longer need these ones uh, they helped me to see what i really need to do so let's go we now have the prize we have uh, from pizza type id bringing category we already brought in the category then create a c cte with the result of uh, of this 10 a and 10 d to 10 d okay so what it simply means is that let's call this one uh, uh, width. Remember that to create a CTE. So it's like a variable TV2. I'm calling it that is like my table two. Um, and it's going to represent all of this. So I'm going to just use brackets to, you know, circle, circle it around and say, okay, this is what it's going to do all right so now i have it here and let's test it if it would work so what i'm going to do is uh, just create this and come here so that's just a line that would have been any comment but for space i just put that on the tb2 select all from tb2 so let's test it if it works so um select all from tb2 so let me see with this as oh sorry i ought to have an as there as this 
select this from TB2. So it runs. So that's what it is. It is representing uh, the table. So we've already done that. That's the CTE. So one last question. Return a table with the following fields grouped by month and year. So it wants us to return the month here, the total classic revenue, supreme, and veggie. So these are the categories that are here. So they want us to use a field to, you know, represent whatever the uh, revenues that come from all of them. So, okay, let's try to do this. So, um, Let's try to do this. So, uh, so I'm going to come here, and the, we we want the month uh, month underscore year. And let's run this. So we have that one. So now we're going to like we mentioned, if we have the amount as revenue like this and what it does is that it gives us just all of the revenues for us to see but that's not what they want us to do they want us to be able to say for january 2015 what was for each of the categories so we'll have them in columns like that so what we're going to do we're not going to have this one here so i'm going to start something like that looks like um a sub query so this is how it goes it says case when when um when so i want to see when category um is equal to let's start with classic um when it's equal to classic the question is what should it do it says then um, then what you should do is give me the amount you get it give me the amount and else give me zero so I want you to see what this will do first to see what exactly it does so this is what it does um, okay let me just check okay it needs me to have an end here I guess yes so that's it so you see for all my records wherever you have zero it means that case is not classic you get, get it if you have anywhere where you have zeros i mean uh, if you have anywhere where it is classic you're going to have the number come out from there now see what i'm going to do if i do this sum here sorry if i just add a sum around it and say as revenue like this and hit my so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to just group by month underscore year like this. And I'm going to just uh, group all oh, this has an issue. Good. So this, so this is what it actually does here. So it's saying that if it is classic, just give me as uh, so um, let's call this classic revenue um, underscore revenue okay good so starting from so we're going to just uh, i'm going to just um, order this order by um month year also month underscore year okay let's see how this goes so i good so i want it to be like this and i want whatever the revenues for each of them to come in here so if it is classic if it is if the category is classic give me this so i'm missing something about this classic i don't think it is Woo. okay so it is case sensitive that is what caused that to happen so this is what it is for each of these and um so this amount here i'm just 
going to let us see if we can do a round in it or no let's let's use what we know um this is going to be this and the Merrick and I'm going to say just do it something like this and let's see what it gives us good so it gives us this and I think this is just fine for us we've done this before so what I did was just cast it and gave us this one so that's fine so let's just take this one and uh, we're going to put a comma here paste this here we're going to call this uh, veggie and see if it gives us so we're going to say this is veggie veggie okay so let's test it to see if it gives us what we want good so you can see this is for classic this is for veggies and we can do the last one you know we can do the last one here and this one is going to give us um, supreme supreme uh, supreme i think that's what it is i like using small letters and we're going to call this supreme let's just believe that's this spelling and let's run it to see yes it gives us that sorry supreme all right so good so this is what we want because we are told to give it a total this is total i guess total classic total supreme and, sorry so and uh, total of this okay all right so except for that maybe i should have total underscore total underscore and uh, total all right so if we run it this is what we get and we've been able to arrange them in this order using sql to do everything so this is exactly how sql works and um, uh, this is just 10 questions that introduces you to some of what sql can do in future videos, I intend to take data sets and we will do some real business analysis about them, you know, uh, understand things about how you can use SQL to do especially exploratory uh, data analysis like we have done uh, here. So I encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel, like, uh, share, um, that's the way you can help me. I'm trying to help persons to be able to see what they can do with XQL and how they can use it in their jobs. So if you found this video very helpful, please, I'm asking you also help me. Um, I'm, I'm a freelancer and I, I live by, you know, remote jobs, so I could also do things like this, just that I'm teaching you to also do the same. So let's see how we can help ourselves. And so thank you very much for watching. I will see you in yet another video.